now it's gonna we're gonna open the floor for questions. Um, I'm actually here with a recruiter, Gina Lee. Gina Ri, sorry, Gina. <laughs> Always pronounce her name wrong. Um, she's gonna be answering questions with me, and we're going to take ones from the audience, um, either written or if you raise your hand and you want to speak it to us. And we also have some questions that people previously submitted. So, uh, Gina, you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. This is Gina. Great, great. Okay, so let's look at the first question that we got submitted. I'm gonna change microphones right here so we can um, speak a little bit better. All right, so the first question is from Joanna. If we haven't graduated yet, but we'll graduate before orientation, will a letter of intent to graduate and incomplete transcripts be enough until our diploma is ready? The answer to this one, Gina, is uh, yes. Yeah, you just need, oh, their notes are good. Oh, closer, okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, yes, um, incomplete transcripts will suffice for now. When you do get your uh, final grades, you just do need to um, submit your final transcripts again, okay? And Gina, they do need a letter of intent to graduate, right? Yes, you need to submit the degree confirmation letter and incomplete, incomplete transcript before um, you get the actual diploma. And um, we hope that you can submit the Postal Bachelor Diploma as soon as you get it. Okay, good. All right, so let's move on to the next question we got in our inbox from John. For getting the criminal background check apostle, does it need to be a photocopy or exactly the document that we get oop, that we get in the mail? Yeah, John, it has to be the original. Um, they won't apostyle a copy of it. Um, so make sure you send the original to uh, the Secretary, not Secretary of State, the State Department in Washington, D.C. if you're in the United States. Okay? From Justin, what is the specific earliest date of issue of the criminal background check? Yeah, I know this is confusing for a lot of people, Gina, because um, there's a six-month validity of the background check. And we talked about this with other recruiters, and it's going to be the earliest date is February uh, February 1st, correct? Yes, so it is valid for six months and EPIC will use your criminal background check around the end of June or July, so um, February 1st is the oldest date you can get it. Yeah, so make sure that nothing is older than February 1st on the date of issuance on that uh, criminal background check, okay? Going on from Catherine H. What is the latest possible amount of time for submission of documents after an interview where it is still possible and likely to receive placement? Uh, Gina, I don't know. What, what is the latest uh, date that they can um, submit documents? Um, it will be the end of June. But the first, you need to know um, EPIC is first come, first serve basis. So if you submit all the documentation faster than others, then you will um, high possibility to receive placement. And if you are going to submit those documents the, um, the, in the end of June, then you need to be flexible to the location because um, yeah, it is hard to place in where you prefer to go. Right, yeah, so if you are really uh, want the location that you listed, get it in as soon as possible. It definitely has a time game for Epic, but the latest possible date is going to be the end of June. Okay? That's what Corvia recommends. And finally, from Catherine S., I am unclear about where to go to obtain an apostle stamp. This is a tricky question. If you, um, I can't comment for you know the other countries, but in the United States, um, if it's your FBI background check, you have to do the uh, State Department in Washington, D.C., because the FBI is a federal level document and state governments are not allowed to touch that. Okay, But if you went to a university in your home state or you went to university in a state, that's a state level document. So you can get that apostled at your state department uh, secretary, uh, secretary of state. Oh, that's getting confusing. So anyway, state level documents can all be done in your own state, but if it's an FBI background check, that is federal level, so you have to get that done through the federal government, okay? 
All right, and let's open up the floor. Do we have any other questions that you guys want to ask? Don't be shy. You can write in the question box or you can raise your hand and we will patch you in. So, Gina, do we have a first question? Many people also raise their hands, so I will open the mic. Like, 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 uh, mic first. All right, Michael Langen, Lang, Langen, Langen. Uh, you are about to be unmuted, so yeah, you can answer or ask your question. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, not to be the dead horse, but uh, another question about the uh, criminal background check. So, okay. I'm going to be in D.C. Um, sometime in April. Is it possible yeah. to get it done in person? Yeah, actually, um, that is the best way to do it, if it's possible. Um, it only takes, you can do it the same day, actually, and there's a lot of services that do that same thing. They they you send your FBI background check to them and they just walk it in because it can be done so quickly. So if you're definitely going to be in Washington, D.C., you can do it the same day. Walk in and you'll walk out with the stamp. That answer everything for you? Hopefully it did. Okay. All right. Yes, and also... Um... Lagay, I will unmute your microphone. Lagay Salzman. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I have a question about my passport, um, the photo page. My passport expires January 2015. And so I wanted to know if I should make a copy of the passport now or renew it and then make a copy. That's a good question. Uh, Gina, so she wants to know, you know, her passport's going to expire not immediately soon, but relatively soon. So should she get, um, uh, renew her passport and submit that photo page or should she uh, just photocopy the one she has now? Of course, you renew your passport, but what is your exactly um, expire date? It is um, January 6th, 2015. Okay. So um, the passport should be expired later than your contract, and you will, con you will start your contract this September, mm -hmm. from, from the September to next year, the August. So mm -hmm. you need to get the new one expired later then. Okay, and then make the copy? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. Photocopy of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No problem. All right. We're going to take a next question from. If you have any question, please um, raise your hand. We'll unmute your microphone. Or you can type it. If you're not comfortable, you don't have a mic, you can type it into the text box. If you don't have any question, then we will answer the question box's question. Okay, so... Um. Okay, so we're going to take the first question from the question box. And this is from Francie Basile. So do our recruiters just get back to us with comments on our application now, the ones we submitted? Is that what we should be waiting for? Yeah, they will... Um, was it Gina? Today they start doing epic application revisions. Yes, actually we started the revision uh, weeks ago. So yeah, we have many applications right now. So I'm really sorry to delay for it, but I will get back to you your revised application very soon. Okay, yeah. 
guys. Just hold on for right now. We got a lot of traffic with uh, applications, and we're going to get to your application as soon as possible to make sure it's perfect for you, okay? And then we will submit our notes back to you. Okay, so what's the next question? Ah, uh, this is a good one. From Alan Pasqua. Is it a felony? Is a felony or a misdemeanor of any kind, regardless of the offense, void my students of applying? Yeah, uh, the FBI background check is really strict. If anything comes up on there, it most likely will bar you. Um, you can always ask your recruiter, but mostly it has to be completely clean. Okay. Okay, if you have any question, please raise your hand. We'll unmute your microphone. Please don't be shy. <laughs> I think we were so thorough. All the questions are answered. <laughs> Uh, we will some questions from the question box. So Yuri Gibson, how should we address Epic in the personal essay? Do we just say dear Epic? Are you talking about the personal essay in the Epic application, right? Then you can just say. Um, well, actually, it's not a letter. A uh, personal essay is an essay, like you wrote in school. You, you know, for those essays, you didn't say dear. Miss Heim or something <laughs> like that. So uh, don't do any, don't address it to anyone. It's just about yourself, okay? And the next question is Kaylin Jackson. What is the deadline to submit an postal master diploma? Mm. So. Usually, you need to submit all the documentation as soon as you pass the EPIC interview, and it will be around like the mid or end of June, May. I'm sorry. So, um, you need to submit after you pass the interview, but um, if you are not graduate master degree yet, but you can submit the degree confirmation, SMA's bachelor diploma, and then you need to submit a postal but a master diploma along with the transcript as soon as you get it. And usually you need to submit it by the end of June or July. Yeah, and remember, just going back and related to what we talked about before, um, when you're apostolizing, your diploma, it can be done at your state, uh, Secretary of State, okay? okay? Okay, have any questions? <laughs> okay, I see one. Um, this is from Kristen and it says, this might be a dumb question. Kristen, no question is dumb. But will speeding tickets show up in an FBI background check? Will that look bad to Epic? You know, Gina, I'm not sure about this. What is the ruling on that? Um, well, speeding ticket does not show up on the FBI check, I think. And it will effect to bad effect to the epic process yeah but if you get any record on the criminal background check then please let us know um, I think I, I can add to this um, if you have a general speeding ticket or parking ticket it's not gonna matter but you know um, if you drive really over the speed, speed limit like over 100 miles it gets turned into a reckless uh, reckless driving citation and I think that would uh, appear on your criminal background check but general speeding tickets won't matter
Right, and Michael Langen is asking, I just wanted to double check one thing. So when you say submit, you mean electronically, correct? Yeah, for these initial documents, it's all electronically through email attachments to us. The later documents that you're going to submit, um, the FBI background checks, those are all going to be the physical ones, okay? And that's the later documents that we'll let you guys know about. Okay. So if you submit those documents to us through email, then we will submit those documents to EPIC directly instead of you. And that will request um, interview after they have a screening the documents. Good. Okay, so Brittany, raise your hand so I will unmute your microphone. Brittany Lilos. Hi, Brittany. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, so can you guys speak a little more about the competitiveness of the popular locations like Seoul and Busan? Because I put Seoul as my preference, but now I'm kind of conflicted as to whether or not I should do that. Do they normally look for like teach, teach people who have been like teachers before or a certain age group or like something, a higher yeah, level? Of there is a lot of factors that go into it, um, your qualifications, if you do have teaching experience, but also it is balanced again with the timeliness of how fast you submit your documents and if you're uh, beating out people. Because what they pretty much is, imagine a huge whiteboard of, that says Seoul, Busan, Jeju Island, you know, Daejeon, mm -hmm. and as they get the applications, they say, okay, Brittany is here, you know, then they take the next application, okay, blah, blah, blah is here, and when right. it gets full, they uh, they uh, finish that section. So just make sure we you know we can give you advice, but uh, just do your research to find out if you want to risk that or if you, you know if you really want Seoul, go for it. You know if you really want Busan, go for it. Um, if you don't have a preference, maybe be a little more flexible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ah, no problem. I will say though, Brittany, if you're still listening, um, you guys have to realize that Epic um, is a, a pretty competitive program. That a lot of people apply and they don't pass the interview, um, or they, uh, you know, drop out and things like that. So it is a saturated market, and so you guys are definitely competing. Okay, but that's why you're with Corvia because we're going to help you be better than the rest. Okay. Yeah, it's better to research other location as well, and we are going to actually um, upload the videos to Wonder Why. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have an upcoming video series called Wonder Why, where we're going to answer the most popular questions, like about the other locations or the differences between um, those locations. So um, keep an eye out for that. Okay, do you have any questions? Michael, do you still have a question? Then I will unmute your microphone. No, the, you answered the one in the question box. Thank you. Oh, no problem. All right, it looks like uh, maybe everyone is satisfied. Maybe we can just get a couple more from the question box and then uh, we'll let you guys go. Okay, thank you for joining our webinar today. And we have many questions and question boxes. So um, we will close this webinar after answering all the questions, but our present is um, end today. Okay, so we are gonna answer a couple more questions for the question box. Oh, we're going to type in the answer. I see, okay, gotcha. Okay, so then we're, we're going to wrap it up. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. I hope this webinar and Q&A were helpful to you to prepare for the EPIC process. If you have any further questions, please check with your recruiter and take part in our Facebook community. Another thing is we would like to ask you guys to give some feedback on our webinar. That will be a big help for working on better webinars in the future. 
Please take a few minutes to fill out our survey through the link we send after this webinar. Thank you again for joining our webinar, and I hope we will see you guys all at the next webinar. Bye-bye.